Howdy, gamers! So, as you're probably aware, Final Fantasy XIV, which has a free trial, it goes up to level 60, by the way, just thought you should know, uh, has some pretty fantastic music, especially when it comes to the boss fights, and more specifically in this case, the raid bosses. So I thought it'd be fun to kind of give them all a listen and put them on a tier list. Of course, the D tier, being the lowest tier, doesn't necessarily mean the song is bad, it's just not as good. The D tier on a Final Fantasy XIV music list is probably like, you know, uh, at least a B tier on a other game music tier list in average. And we'll go in order, I th believe I have the order correct. So starting off is the Binding Coil of Bahamut boss theme, Calamity Unbound. Let's give this a quick listen. Alright, so I do remember this one quite well from, not from doing the bosses, but from running the Moogle Tome events on, uh, what was it, I believe it was Finding Coil of Bahamut Turn 2, where you just run in with a bunch of blue mages, and you final sting the boss, uh, I remember doing this hundreds of times to farm the Tome Stones, it's not a bad song, it is a little, I guess, generic boss fight kind of thing doesn't really stand out in any way, but it is quite good at what it's trying to do, which is being a, you know, intimidating boss fight theme. Of course, this was still when Final Fantasy XIV was kind of fighting its identity, so to speak, so can't really rate it too harshly. I would guess, uh, I guess C tier is probably good for this. Let's, uh, skip ahead a little bit. I believe there's like a second part that's pretty good. Yeah, so it gets pretty like triumphant later on, and I am not as familiar with this part because the boss is usually dying in like a minute when I was running it, but yeah, this is a this is a good this is a good introduction. Good start, good start. What's next? Uh da -da -da. Rise of the White Raven. Nail Deus Darnus Steam. Okay, this one's a little weird. Uh, there's some weird chanting going on. I'm going to have to wait for the lyrics to kick in on this one. This is the one I'm probably like least familiar with out of all of the songs on this list. I haven't done the what is it? Ultimate Coils of Bahamut, either. So. Alright, there's some Latin singing. Mm, yeah, I'm not really vibing with this one, honestly. Like, it's alright. Like, I wouldn't really want to fight a boss to this music, you know? Let's skip ahead a little bit. Yeah, it goes into a uh, torn from heaven, I believe. Kind of like it's got like that motif. The Latin singing is it's good. It's like it's different. It's different. But, um, Yeah, this something's gonna have to go in the lower tiers. I can adjust later, but for now, uh, for now, yeah, I'm not really, not really vibing with this one too much. Let's see, next is Phoenix, or is there's a uh... oh, here we go, Phoenix theme from the ashes. You got kind of like a somber church organ going on, I think. I think that's what it is. Oh yeah, I should also say I'm not like very technically knowledgeable about music. I just kind of like what I like. I love video game music. Almost a little bit too much. Like, I, I'm one of those people that has to have the game music on when I play 
Like, some people, they'll mute the music and they'll just play, like, their own playlists or whatever, but I don't know, I, I... It's not the same without the game music, with how it was intended to be played. I mean, I, I get it if you're doing the same raid, like, for dozens of hours on end, but even still, <laughs> uh, I still use the regular music. It's got, got, got kind of a slow start here. Let's see what, what happens next. Skipping ahead a few seconds, see if it like changes its tempo tone. So it's got kind of like that uh what is it? Answers, I think it's called? Yeah. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. It definitely hits a lot different after playing Endwalker, that's for sure. Uh, if you know, you know. But Again, not really something I'd want to fight a boss to. I'm gonna... I'm... Let's see if it... Let's skip ahead a little bit more. Yeah, it's... it's... it's alright. I mean... It really does fit what's going on and kind of... Tone. It's not supposed to be an e epic, high-tempo boss battle theme, but it doesn't mean that I would want to listen to it. So, it's it's pretty good. It's pretty good, but not for the sake of this tier list, probably on the lower spectrum, I, I gotta say. Okay, so next up is Bahamut. Good old Bahamut. This one has, uh, two phases, I believe? Let's see, let's get to the... Yeah, so it goes into the answers. Let me check my notes. Yeah, answers, okay, so... This is the song, and it's the same one that, you know, really emotional, really powerful music. Uh, not really what you would expect for what you're fighting Bahamut, but, you know, it makes sense in context. I guess if you really know the lore and dig into it. I do like it. I, I like it a lot, like... Mm. It doesn't- it doesn't have that oomph that I'm looking for in a raid boss theme, like... If I were playing this on content and had to farm this every week, it would kind of... Ruin the mood, I guess, a little bit. Like, this is really good for a cinematic battle. For the first time you're experiencing it, but... Every time after that, it just doesn't really feel like it fits that well. Okay, so the second part that, like, has... The song with everything. Yeah, this is okay, this gets pretty intense, this gets pretty hyped, but... It's a different kind of intensity, it's a different kind of hype. I do really like it, like, in a vacuum, but... Imagining, like, playing the game to it and doing a hard fight... Especially if you're, like, wiping and all that, uh... Yeah, it doesn't really, doesn't really seem like it would be... Quite the right ambiance. Still really good, though. Alright, so that's, a uh, Bahamut. There's not a ton of music for this one, but... Ah, oh, now we're into the good, good, good stuff. Not that the stuff before wasn't good. No, 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 don't... Don't come after me in the comments. Or, or do, you know. Engagement is engagement. Anyways... Yeah, Locust. I love, I love this song, uh... I... Probably... Would prog the epic of Alexander just so I could listen to this song. Ah, it's so good. I, I love the the beat. 
the lyrics are pretty incomprehensible, but, you know, it doesn't matter. It's a good time, it's a pretty funky rhythm. I love this part with, like, the beat drop. It's so good. It's really catchy, too. Uh, it, is a little, it is a little repetitive, because it does play for a lot of the tier. There just wasn't as many songs back then, but it, it's a good one. Like, if I had to listen to one on repeat, I'm not complaining about listening to this song. Okay, so Pepsi Man can go in a... Uh, a tier. Higher A tier. I like it more than Bahamut. Yeah, the, the voice they use for the lyrics is kind of really different from like every other lyrical song in this game, but I, I do dig it. I think it's great. Alright, next up we got Metal, Alexander team. Guitar is going pretty hard in the intro. Oh yeah, that, that's the good stuff. I'm not sure if I like it more or less than Locus. Hmm. For now, I think I will start it with B. I do think I like the uh, the singing in Locus more than the singing in this song. Well, okay, so now we're at the lyrics. This is kind of like telling the story from the Goblin's perspective, which is pretty cool. They do a lot of storytelling with the lyrics in these raid fight songs, and I think that's just so cool. But overall, I do yeah, I do definitely prefer the song or the lyrics in Locus over this one. Uh, I would say, like, the melody is pretty on par with each other, but the singing definitely pushes Locus ahead for me. Like, uh, the instrumental is just so good here, though. This part, this part goes hard. Mm, yeah, yeah. Alright, let's see, what's next? Uh, uh, Brute Justice. Where's Brute Justice? Oh, here we go, Brute Justice. Oh man, I, I love this one too! This one's so good! Alexander is just so good, like... His Raid series has such good music. This one sounds like something out of a Saturday morning cartoon or something. I just love the energy and the vibe. It's so unique, or distinct. It's like... Kind of the same melody as the last one. I mean, the, the song is the same. I think this is like metal brute justice version or something. Oh, man. But the guitar is going going in. <laughs> I, I yeah, I, I definitely like this one more than the uh, what is it, Burden of the Father version? I think. I give brute justice a uh, eight tier. Do well, I like it more than Locust, though? Mm. I think it, like, goes into Locust, too, like... Oh, yeah, yeah, this part. Okay, so this is just, like, a kind of like a cover of Locust, but it goes, like, so much harder. So, you know, I, I think I've got to put Brute Justice above it. Maybe even an S tier. You know what? Brute Justice can go in S tier. It's that good. I mean, these are all really good. It's, it's so hard to choose. I love the soundtrack in this game so much. <laughs> Alright, Cruise Chaser. This one, this one's definitely a bit more mellow than the rest of the Alexander songs so far. Not that it's a bad thing, like, it definitely has its time and place. It goes forward and back and forward and back. Yeah, uh, yeah, this one, this one. Okay, so yeah, this part is kind of weird, kind of memey, honestly. Like the forward and back, yeah, it's repetitive. It's 
doesn't sound bad though. Like, yeah. I'm thinking. Okay, now you know, now it's going to the rest of the song. Uh, it's it's really good. I. Yeah, I like this one. Again, the energy is like completely different. I don't vibe with it as much as uh, Metal or Locust, but it's definitely good. You know, you gotta have a variety. If everything was, you know, super intense, then it kind of loses its impact a bit. So you gotta have the more chill ones. And it's then chill isn't even a bad thing. It's like this is a really good song. Just not as good. For a raid fight, I think. Or at least not my personal taste. Okay, let's see. Next up is... Wait. Yeah, now that, yeah, of course, you got the, the screaming part too. That's pretty good. Okay. Alexander Prime, Rise. Alright, alright. This one is <laughs> something special. This one's something special. You got the sirens going off. You got the lyrics. It's going so fast. Like, it is completely incomprehensible in the best kind of way. I do really like it. Like, if you read the lyrics, like, it is pretty, pretty deep, pretty profound. But it just sounds kind of like babbling when you're just listening to it without the lyrics on the screen. So it gets to the part where it goes, like, uh, A to the L to the Exander, you know? That's, that's, that's such good, such good lyrical writing. Like, who comes up with this stuff? Well, I mean, we, we do know who comes up with this stuff, but that was a rhetorical question. It's kind of like a, kind of got some rap, kind of got some guitar, you know, shreds pretty hard. I, lo I love this song. I'm going to put it in eight here. Hi, eight here. It's all, of course you got like the time stop stuff too that plays during this. Uh, that's up to you if that's an enhancement or a debuff. But <laughs> some people, some people like it just because it, it's the uh, immersion of doing the fight. Which I, again, I don't really have a strong attachment to personally. Oh yeah, and then it goes to the rise up part. Eh, this one's alright. This part's alright. Okay. And then we can go into Omega. Let's see. Omega's where they remix a lot of old game music. Let's go, uh, Delta Escape? Let's see. This one is called Omega Squared. Fittingly, as it is Omega. Even though you're fighting, what? Alteroit? I think that's how you say it. And I think it plays for a few other fights too. So I believe this is a remix of the Final Fantasy V boss theme, which I haven't played personally, but you know, I I do really like the callbacks to the old games. Like I really loved when they played the Final Fantasy III boss music in Crystal Tower. It was so good. Like even though I'm not super nostalgic for old Final Fantasy games. You can tell when they're doing a remix, and they just kind of give it a little special flair. This one, unfortunately, I uh, doesn't really stand out as much in my mind. It's solid. Like, it just kind of has the same thing it runs into with uh, the Binding of Quills of Bahamut boss, where it just kind of like feels a little bit generic boss fighty. Which, I mean, it was, and... To be fair, Final Fantasy did kind of coin that genre of the uh, RPG boss theme, so I mean, that's you can't really complain about that, right? It's pretty good, though. Anyways, uh, X Death. I was kind of debating whether to rank the song separately when you got Door Boss, but you know, I, I think it's easier just to combine the two into one one ranking. That doesn't really make sense, I guess, since I'm ranking it by songs and, you know, you could have a really good door boss theme and then a really bad uh, second phase theme, I guess. That isn't what happens, but 
I mean, I'm speaking hypothetically, of course. Anyways, let's just listen to the music a little bit. X Death. This one is pretty cool. I mean, it doesn't really sound super distinct. Uh, I think the phase two is quite a bit better. Let's see if I can skip ahead to the phase two part. Oh wait, no, I have to, have to open a separate video for that. Yeah, Neo X Death. Okay, this is the good one. That intro is oh, it's so good, like so intense. It really sets the mood. I mean, then you have to watch that really long cutscene and cutscene of him coming out of the void with like naked woman embedded into his body for some reason. Uh, I don't know. That's it's an old Final Fantasy thing. It, it probably makes sense in context. Yeah, I really like this one. Shreds goes hard. It's a really nice cover of the original theme from the old games. Now this part is kind of, it's kind of a uh, kind of chaotic, but I kind of dig it in a way. Mm, I can put this one in B tier, I think. I think that I think that's a good spot for it. And then you get into this part, it's like, this is like, you can really, it's really got that old Final Fantasy battle theme feel to it. And I, I love that, like, I don't know, I don't know how people feel about remixes in this game, but I really like them. I mean, I generally people are probably favorable towards it, but I do think that uh, some people prefer the original arrangements more, which is understandable. Especially if you're not nostalgic for the old ones. But, I don't know, they did a really good job with remixes, what can I say? Right, a Battle Decisively, Sigma Scape. <laughs> this one is probably the one that's like most obviously an old Final Fantasy remix. Like, you can just tell, even if you never played Final Fantasy VI, but I haven't. And even if you never heard this song before, which I have, I mean, this is like one of the most iconic retro game themes of all time, probably. From the SNES era, at least. And, like, the instruments and the way they arrange it, it definitely feels more like it's trying to be faithful to the original battle theme. Like, they took a lot of creative liberties with some of the other remixes in this game, but this one just plays it straight. It's just like, what would the... SNES FF6 battle theme sound like if it were made in modern times and this is what it would be. And it's great. I love it. Okay, let's see. But do I love it enough to put it in A tier? I'll put it above... I'll put it above forward and back, but then I'll put it below metal. It's, that's probably fair, I think. Oh, no, 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 this piano part though, this is like the creative liberty to take, and this is, this one is really good. Okay, you know what, the piano lets it, I'll put it on the piano. I, lo I love that piano so much. <laughs> okay, Dancing Mad, oh man, okay, okay. Uh, hot take time, I don't like Dancing Mad. I, I don't, I think this theme is pretty overrated. Like, maybe you had to be there, Final Fantasy VI. Uh, it's no one wing angel, like... I don't know. Maybe I'm being too contrary. Maybe being too contrarian by saying I don't like this song, but I don't know. It it's like ominous. It fits the tone really well. It has like that bit of cha chaoticness that uh, is very befitting of Kefka as a character. But the song itself, like, I don't love it. I don't hate it, but. And this one has like four phases to it, right? So let's let's skip ahead a little bit. It's got like that church organ, which is pretty cool. The god Kefka. Okay, this this part is pretty cool. I gotta say, like this part is pretty cool. It is very faithful to the original, also. Like you can tell that they were. Uh, trying to not alienate people because this they knew this was a fan favorite theme. So I'm not a fan personally, but 
I do know people love this song, and I do think they did a good job with it. So since this is my tier list, and I make the rules, I'm putting it in C tier. Uh, leave an angry comment if you hate this opinion. <laughs> or or don't, you know, that would, because, you know, that's kind of a, a mean thing to do. You can respectfully disagree with me, that's good too. Okay, next up we got Alphascape 1, uh, Battle, fittingly named as it is the Final Fantasy 1 battle theme. You know, it's the OG, deserves some respect. You don't have to give it a fancy title, you know what you're getting into. Anyways, uh, I'm here to kill chaos, it's not a hope or a dream, it's like a hunger or a thirst. You know, you know the drill. So I really love this song. Final Fantasy 1 is like the only classic Final Fantasy game I do have nostalgia for, because I did play it for some reason. This song's really good. Final Fantasy 1 didn't have its own boss theme, it only had a battle theme, so they do a really good job of like, remixing it to sound like it's a boss theme. They do take a few creative liberties, it does sound overall faithful, but like, uh, the instruments and the music, it's just, it's so good for this one. It has a really good piano segment that I love. Where, where, where is it? It's, gonna be, it's coming up right here. Uh, yeah, this is this part is so good. Okay, so let's see. Where am I ranking this? Mm, it's probably not S tier. I'll put it in A tier. I'll put it above Bahamut. Because, you know, I love me some chaos. What can I say? Okay, next we got Midgard's Tormer. I hope I'm saying that right. This one is just kind of ripped from the Heaven's Word story, I think. I don't even think that, like they gave him its own unique battle theme. They just like, okay, well you fight him already in the game, so you can fight him again. Same song. I don't really like it that much. Like, it does have the nice uh, remix of the Heaven's Word song in it. I don't remember what it's called. And then it's got like that generic stock flying mount theme. I don't know, it doesn't really fit a boss theme, especially with like a giant fire-breathing dragon. Like, It is kind of fittingly somber, I guess, but it doesn't really do much for me, honestly. I'm putting it in D tier. Do I like it more than- yeah, yeah, okay. It's a, it's a decent song, like I don't hate the song, but I don't really like it in context, even if it does make sense, like I don't know. I feel like it's just such a high bar with the Omega theme, and they just kind of... This one just feels kind of out of place. Like, Omega's soundtrack is so good. Speaking of which, we have Escape. Yeah, Escape. Okay, uh... Okay, Alpha Escape V3. I love, 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 love this song. This is so good. Uh, after running... What, the Sigma Dreamscape, though, and Endwalker? Like, I don't know, this <laughs> this feels more like a dungeon theme than a boss theme to me, but... I don't know, the... Melody is really good, the lyrics are... really profound, like, if you get to read them. Like, even... even though it's kind of... kind of memed on a bit, Chicken Tenders. That's, that's the meme, right? Oh, uh, yeah, this, this song speaks for itself, like, it's so good. I'm putting it at the top of A here, like, the very top. It's, it's so good, it's so good! I can't even think of words, like, just other than it's so good, because that's how good it is. Mm -hmm. And then this motif shows up a lot in the game, too, so, like, by the time you get to this fight, it just feels very nice to hear, and, like, get a full version, finally. Well, at least it was for me, because I played this like after I beat Shadowbringers, so, you know, a little bit different. Alright, Alpha Escape 4. So this is... kind of weird, honestly, to me, how they used uh, Maker's Ruin, which I always kind of, you know, people say, oh, this is the Warriors of Light theme, like... It's his own personal theme. That makes sense, so like, why is it playing during Omega? I mean, Omega's not like 
a big story boss or anything, is he? He kind of is, actually. Like, he does have some pretty profound impact on the story, even if he's not a required fight. Which is kind of weird. Well, we're here to discuss the music, and it is good. There's no lyrics or anything, but it doesn't need lyrics. That's how good it is. Then I think it also, uh, let's see, there's a, this is like the door boss version. There's also uh, another version too. Let's see if I can pull it up. Oh yeah, then it also kind of remixes in Torn from the Heavens. That's really cool. Like, that is, that is pretty good. Okay. Like the re, the remix of Torn from the Heavens with Maker's Ruin really makes it seem like it's fitting for a final boss, but this is just kind of a side quest boss, which makes it a little weird, but it's still really good all the same. Alright, let's go into Final Omega. This one... I don't think I ever did this one, actually, so this is probably, like, the first time I'm hearing it. Okay, so you got the chanting, you got the ominous music. This intro is really cool. Alright, let's see. Uh, I don't know, I, I feel like Escape is just a lot more memorable, a lot more exciting. And this is more Final Boss-like for sure, but as a song, uh, we can put... O12 in B tier. That sounds good to me. I do like Maker's Ruin. It's always nice to hear that one. You know what? We'll put it above X Death. That, that sounds right. Yeah, like I, uh, I kind of rambled during the last bits of the Omega section, but I'm a bit of a Shadowbringers zoomer, so Eden, I have a bit more personal connection to. Uh, back with the remixes, I think this is Final Fantasy 8? 9? One of those? I think it's 8. I'm pretty sure it's 8. This one's really good. I did not know that this was a remix of a Final Fantasy song. I love this part, like, with the, the church organ. Not a church organ, it's just a regular organ, probably. Maybe? Maybe? I don't know. I don't know what instrument it is. I don't know what instruments! I don't know what instruments! hurt me. Uh, but where am I ranking it? Mm. I'll put it in B tier. I'll put it below the... below the train. Below the FF6 boss theme. That's probably... that's probably right. Okay, next we have Leviathan. So this is a remix of the Leviathan theme from A Realm Reborn. Uh, as far as the A Realm Reborn primals go, Leviathan was one that didn't really have a huge impact on me. Like, Titan and Garuda and Ramu and Shiva were all a lot more memorable, but... I don't know, this one's pretty good. It starts off slow, but the, the guitars go pretty hard, the percussion is really nice. Just like in regular Leviathan, except it's like, with the theme of like the Eden Primals, it's like, the, it's a song, but it's like cranked up to 11, so. Yeah, so it's got like that little bit of that distortion going on, because it's, these are like, different versions of the Primals, like, remixed. So it makes sense to have like, a little bit of weirdness mixed in with the theme. And then we get to the familiar part from Leviathan. Uh, the lyrics aren't great, but, you know, whatever. I'll put it at the lower end of B tier. This isn't, like, one that I would want to listen to a lot, but if I'm listening to it now, it's alright. Yeah, it, it's just decent, you know, it's pretty good. Okay, okay. Now we have a re a real banger though, like I 
Gotta say, I love Titan's music in this game. Like, when I was first playing the game, fighting Titan for the first time was like the first time I realized that this game was something special. So, I really love Titan's theme in all variations. And Landslide is just like the Titan theme, but cranked up to 11. So, I gotta go. I gotta like preemptively give it an S tier, because it's Titan's theme. Like, what can I say? It's a classic. And then he also has like a second theme, uh, Titan Maximum, where like he spits out the baby Titan. And that's like uh, the rock remix. <laughs> rock baby Titan of the original Titan team. So you get to hear both of them in one fight, and it's just fantastic. Although, when I was playing it, I always killed him before I got to mini Titan, so I never heard that part in game, but I think it also plays during uh, Ultima Weapon Ultimate. Anyways, it's just Titan. This really weird version of Titan, but like in a, the best way possible. The lyrics are even more incomprehensible than before. If you thought the singing was weird and distorted, now it's like even more alien. But that just adds just adds to the ambiance of the song, honestly. Oh yeah, and this like high tech future techno part of it, it is like creates a weird juxtaposition that I just really like. I don't know. I'm showing a lot of my personal bias towards Titan here, aren't I? But I'm sure you can understand. Going into Ramu. Again, the primal theme, but cranked up to 11. Although I would say this one is more cranked up to 12, given how like, kind of subdued the original Ramu fight theme was. Kind of like a Ramu at the rave. Mm, I like this one. But I'll put it above X Death. Below Omega. That seems to be right. Like. The techno rave dubstep stuff, it's... I don't hate it. It's, uh, cr again, the juxtaposition it creates with the uh, more soft singing. It's interesting. I like it. But it is a little, a little jarring in a way. Especially since if you're used to the original Ramu theme where it's very calm, chill for a primal fight. So the weird kind of perversion of it is... It's good. It's good. It's just good. Okay, Shiva. Yeah, this is the good, good stuff. So Shiva's theme has always been kind of one of a lot of... Uh, I don't know, very emotional, I guess? Like, it's a good song, it's very powerful. It's not... Of course it's not the same vibe as, like, Titan, but, you know, you gotta be a little, little unique. Variety, spice of life, all that stuff that I've said before. Oh, I totally skipped Garuda and Ifrit. I'm gonna go back to that one after this, I guess. I always like the singing in this song, too. But, I don't know. Uh, in a weird kind of way, I almost do prefer the original Shiva over the Eden Shiva. Like, I'm not even saying that because I died to Light Refulgence. Uh, I just feel like I kind of vibed more with regular Shiva. Like, almost all the other Eden primals I liked more. But it's a high bar, to be fair. 
This section is really good though. It is a high bar to set with the music in this game, of course. Okay. We'll put it in B tier also. B tier is getting pretty full. I might rearrange it later after I finish the list if I need to. Where does this go? I'll put it above, forward, and back. Yeah, that sounds right to me. Okay, we need a E7S, I think? Is it E7 or E6? Uh, what is it called? Primal Angel? Alright, let's see. Yeah. Eden, Ifrit, and Garuda. So Ifrit definitely, his theme is not very memorable. It feels kind of like they had a generic boss theme and then were like, well, maybe we should have a unique boss theme for each primal fight. Uh, Garuda's is a bit better. I do think it is pretty memorable, uh, especially with the now fall part after the beat drop, or I guess before the beat drop. It definitely is more Garuda's theme with some Ifrit mixed in because I guess Ifrit's theme isn't as memorable, of course, like I said. Ah, yeah, okay. okay, that part is good. That part is good. It doesn't really feel that much remixed, like, compared to the other Primal themes in this tier. Like, it definitely feels more samey, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, but... The two themes didn't really have all that much impact on their own. I don't feel bad about putting this in C tier. They do a really good job of transitioning it into Ifrit's theme. Like, even if I don't care too much for Ifrit's theme, like... They do a good job of setting out what they're trying to do with this song, which I do appreciate a lot. Okay. Moving on. Uh, Cloud of Darkness. Or I guess it's not just Cloud of Darkness. We'll call it, a uh, Don't Be Afraid from Final Fantasy VIII. Really weird how they play this for Cloud of Darkness, though, considering they have a perfectly good Cloud of Darkness fight song in the game already. And it's like, if they had the song and wanted to use it, they could have still used it on E10, and then used Cloud of Darkness theme for her own fight, but whatever. It's a good song. I feel it's pretty, like, pretty much on par with the... Other one from Eden, Forced Your Way. So I'll put it next to it. I, I like it a little bit more. I do wish they had the Cloud of Darkness song in Eden, though. Like, if they remix it or even just use the one from Crystal Tower. Because I really like that song. Like, they did a really good job with remixing that one. But we're not here to talk about that. We're here to talk about raid music, not raid 24 man raid music. We're not here to talk about 8 man raid music. <laughs> There's a second check there's a section of the song that I really like though. Where is it? Let me skip ahead a little bit. Yeah, this part. With the piano and everything. Oh, this one is this part is so nice. And then it goes back into the triumphant version. It's pretty. In this one's pretty intense. I like this song. I mean, I've said that like for everything so far, honestly. Like, I I can't say that I don't like any of these. Jeez, this is a hard list to make. All right, let's go into E11. The Legendary Beast, which I believe is also from FF8. This one's not as memorable to me for some reason, but I do remember the flute going pretty hard in the song. Let's, let's get to that part. Okay, okay, it's coming up, it's coming up here, right, right. Ah, oh, yeah, this part, okay. This is like the one, this is like the part that song stands out of the, to most to me in this song, like... This is the part that stands out the most to me. The flute. It just goes so hard. It's so... Prominent. Like, 
I, th I think that was in the original version of the song too. I never played F Fate, but I like I like it. It's it's unique. It gives it a unique identity for an otherwise not so standout song. Um, we'll put that in top of C, and we'll move Leviathan down. Actually, we not that Leviathan is bad, but it, we do need to flesh out the other tiers a bit more. I think. Oh yeah, this part is good too. Okay, we got Oracle of Darkness. Wait, this is the part two, we need the part one. We'll listen to this for a bit. Yeah, I really like this part. This is, uh... It doesn't sound too much like a end raid boss for a... Raid story though, like Alexander and Omega definitely had a bit more of that, and Bahamut of course, definitely had a bit more of that like end boss vibe. This one just feels kind of like it could go anywhere in the tier. Uh, I think this is also a remix. If we go into the door boss part though, no, that's not it. Here we go. Promises to keep. Eden's promise. We got some Kingdom Hearts sounding ass music here to start with. This one, this this one definitely feels more final boss-ish than the part two for some reason. I don't know. I like this one, but it doesn't hit quite as hard as the other final tier fights so far. Uh Tentatively putting E12 in B tier. Let's skip ahead a little bit. It's got some good bits for sure. Like, it feels very... Mm, I don't know. Triumphant, I guess? Definitely, definitely, definitely a different vibe from the other end tier fights. But not in a bad way. It is solid. Not super memorable, though. If I were making a playlist of Final Fantasy XIV music, of like only the top cuts, this probably wouldn't make it on, but I don't hate it. Finally, we're moving into Pandemonium. This is the one that I have the most personal attachment to because, well, I spent the most time playing it. <laughs> Because when I joined the game in Shadowbringers, the raid was already over. So this is the only one I played new. And let's see, this song, it plays for three fights. Really wish they had a new song for at least for Phoenix, but... Uh, this one's alright. It is a little... It is a little bit plain, a little bit... How do I want to put this? It's not boring, but it doesn't really, it's not really super stand out, I guess, either. It is, listening to it on its own is definitely, <laughs> it's definitely one of those songs that's better listening to it on its own than like doing the fight to it. Because I guess when you're doing the fights, it feels a little bit more monotonous, but I guess I can really appreciate the song a bit more now. And that's something you could apply to most songs, but I do feel like there are some that fit the fight really well. There is a section I really like in this part, though. So right here. With the chanting, this one is really good. Like, it kind of goes from, like, super ominous to, like, getting you pumped up to do the fight. That is, that is a nice touch. And then it has, like, weird whimsical bits with the piano, too. It's like... I don't know, kind of clashes, but at the same time, it does kind of work, so... What tier am I going to put this in? Ancient Shackles can go in C tier, I guess. And now we have the final song for this. Hicks Ventleonis? I don't know if I'm saying that right. I'm definitely not saying that right. My Latin is 
super rusty. Okay, so this one is like totally different vibe from everything else in Final Fantasy XIV, but again, in the best possible way. I really like this song. I know it was kind of uh, divisive, I think, actually, when it came out, just because of how different of a vibe it is, but I like it a lot. Are you on Team Shrieks or Team Freaks? Because, you know, the official lyrics say, you know, Wild Shrieks, but people swear it says Wild Freaks. Anyways... I do think it is kind of funny how it's like singing about how there's all these horrible abominations that are gonna rip you to shreds in this song, and then, but then the song itself is so like upbeat, and they got like the chanting and the. Wait, hold on. Where is it? This part, it just feels like it feels so upbeat and fun. Like you're having a good time even though everything going on is decidedly not a good time. Okay, and then there's the other part I really like, where is it? Uh, this part, I think? Oh yeah, this part, where it's like, it, the voice changes, where it's like a lot more ominous, and then you got the church choir. This, this feels, this part feels more fitting for the fight, but like, you gotta take all of it together into the full package. Of the song. I, lo I love this song. I, I did P4S for so much and I never got sick of this track. Alright, let's do some rearranging. Let's do some cleanup while we're here. Alright, so here's what I'm gonna do. Uh, I'm gonna put this song above of Battle Decisively. I, I think Don't Be Afraid is a little bit better. It's got, you know, the little touches with the instruments they added. I think it edges it out a little bit for as far as the uh, classic Final Fantasy remixes go. I feel like Eden's promise, promises to keep, I feel like it should go above X-Death. Do I, I don't know how to rank the S tier though, this is, this is the hardest part, like, do I listen to my gut and put Titan in first? But I don't know if Titan is first. Titan is first, ah screw it, Titan is first. Alright, that's the video. Uh, again, leave an angry comment, or not angry comment, just leave a comment, please, I'm begging you, I am starved for it, no, 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 don't say that, don't say that. Uh, if you liked the video, subscribe and like, and I will be doing a lot more Final Fantasy content, because there's a lot coming up that I want to do content for, like the Ultimate Raid, Dragonsong War, Thornton EX, that is going to humble me for sure.